Hello everybody and welcome to another art video and this one's an art haul. If you're new here, welcome. If you are one of my lovely regulars, welcome back and it's lovely to see all of you. Uh, this lot came on Saturday, actually a couple of them came a little bit earlier so they're not all from the same place but by and large these are from my favourite art store here in Germany um, which is called Gerstecker and they sent me a 30 euro voucher because I bought so much last year which is incredibly nice of them because I would have bought it anyway so it was really nice to have that thank you and acknowledgement from them so always good so I spent that and got a few things more beside so um, what I want to do today is to um, show you the unboxing and I will also for my patrons be doing a special swatching session um, this video will go to YouTube as well, but the swatching session and seeing what I do with these and of course all the lovely stuff further down the line is for my patrons eyes only. So by all means, come and join us and then you can see it as well. But uh, yeah, OK, so where do I start here? Let me put some boxes aside. How about I start, I'm going to leave that till last because that's got a point. I'll start with the sketchbooks. I have bought two of my favourite sketchbooks again. This one, which I undid because um, it came from, it, this one was from Amazon and instead of wrapping it in something, it just had the clear film on it that it has and um, then their label over the top, which was a bit odd. I thought, yeah, it's great to, to cut back on on their packaging but I would have rather they cut back on the plastic bit rather than the paper they left the paper off but it had a mark on the side a, a tear on the side but it, it, it was fine so I thought well I will open this up and check to see if, if it's okay this one is the Claire Fontaine gold line sketchbook make sure that I'm actually in the shop there with it it's lovely and it's kind of it's got a little bit of texture to it but not too much and I wonder, can I actually reach my sketchbook and show you? Yes, I, I actually can. This is my older one. And I will be doing a proper sketchbook tour of this later on. But as you can see, I have done quite a lot of stuff in this and continue to. But I've got only about five or six pages left. And I could not risk running out, so I replaced that with another one or rather added to it with another one um, like I said when I finish this I'll do a proper sketchbook tour so you can see what I've actually used that for but no loving the Claire Fontaine gold line sketchbook and I love the square format this is another one that I absolutely adore and I wonder can I grab this one aha I can hang on just leaving my chair because my arms are not quite long enough and again I am almost finished this one well a few pages left to go but I will as you can see as a mixed media artist I do all sorts in it so this is well loved and yeah I would have these again any day and indeed I have this one is the Dilutions Creative Journal and it is um, again it is not particularly hang on I'm going to have to commit to opening this here but it's, this one's got a little packet in the pocket in the front that you can close and put things in which is useful if you've got a photo to work from or something like that or just something if you're out and about and you want to put something in it um, it's great these aren't white as you can see by these boxes that's bright brighter white these are a sort of an ivory color but it doesn't affect the colors you use on them it's lovely and this is smoother than the Claire Fontaine but it's also just that tiny bit bigger and I love them they're worth having as we'll take this off now the official un unveiling an official opening of a sketchbook I'm not allowing myself to touch it until I finish the other one because I will do that I'll start hundreds that's why I don't do sketchbook tours all that often because I have a, so many on the go I also bought some more of this mixed media paper this is just a little bit of a off cut from it because it comes in a massive I've no idea what the size is called it's huge it's about double a three 
um, I'm not sure if A1 and a half that works. I must look for that. Never thought to even consider that, but it's quite large and I can get a fair few cuts out of it. And I've made out of this, hang on, doing this again. I've made this sketchbook, which I'm working through out of this. It's a nice accordion sketchbook and I made a little excuse me, made a cover for the end to protect it, but it's all made out of this paper. So what I love about this is it's about 12 euro cents a piece, which is very, very well priced indeed for these massive sheets. It's 12 cents or something like that. And you can cut so much out of it. So you can either make a sketchbook if that's what you want to do, or you can just cut them off to um, actually uh, use. And that's what I've done with some of my um the right way might be helpful that's what i've done with some of my collages is it's just this same paper so it's bright white it's quite smooth it's really nice to work on and um yeah you can make something out of it or just use it and frame what you make or something like that so i bought 12 sheets of that which was really well priced so loving that okay box time this is something that i haven't done for absolutely ages but i've got plans for this and some of it is um back in the day while i was still living in australia i taught folk art painting and um we all we used acrylic now we use acrylic for other things too and i've used them in my regular paintings but with this i'm also going to find because trust me i have one somewhere find my jelly plate and show you how to make textures in your sketchbook with that because that's enjoying a bit of a revival at the moment a little bit like collage sort of thanks to a frequency illusion we we don't see it and then it's everywhere gel plates are going to be the same so i bought some acrylics these are a lucas krill studio and they are a fine artist acrylic. Some of them are a little bit more transparent and translucent than I would like, but I thought, well, these worked out at about three euros 40, I think it was, for this quite large tube. As you can see, compared to my hands, it's quite a large tube. And when you look at gouache, you can buy acrylic this size tube as well. But I figured, this could have its uses, even for creating background texture. If it's very transparent, then you can lay it over and over and over and then paint on top of that. So there's that. My dog is going to be happy with all these cardboard boxes. Okay, so this one, they don't come out the other way. So that one is an iron oxide black. Then I have... A titanium white always buy tit titanium white in everything that I get this one oh gosh this one's had a bit of a rough time this one's an Indian yellow and that's a nice rich yellow it's not particularly I'll have to check what the, the uh, marks mean for this particular brand but I believe that's not particularly um, translucent no that one's translucent the titanium white is opaque which is what I really would like all of them to be but one of the things that I found hardest is getting the paints I used to work with Joe Sonia by Chroma brand of acrylic and I've done a lot of fine artwork with it as well as the folk art and decorative painting like Bauer Malerei all of these lovely things I used to do back in the day um I don't I can't find it here in Germany so if anybody knows where I can buy Joe Sonia's acrylic paint I will love you forever anywhere in the European Union actually <laughs> um burnt umber and this one is it seems to be translucent so we're gonna have some texture work here but never fear we will use them another box of them and they're all nice big gosh there's another one that's had a bit of a rough time but it seems to be fine this one's burnt sienna lemon yellow primary raw sienna and I already have some red so I can mix with those um, mixed different colours. And I've got some blue and this one, for some reason, totally different. It was m a little more expensive. These worked out about three euros, like I said, three euros 40. This one was just a bit over five euros, but it is a bigger tube. 
and it's indigo. I have a thing about indigo. I love it. And I'm hoping that I can mix some nice greens with indigo and my raw sienna, Indian yellow and lemon yellow. So be some nice greens in that, the same as there are in the Ecoline liquid watercolours. All right, pop those aside. So, yeah, interesting stuff coming up with that. And like I said, gel plate. This one, oh, this one first. This one is a boring one. It is quite simply a replacement for some of my Ecoline watercolour. Again, e this one's indigo. And again, indigo. I love indigo to create rich, rich greens and dark greens so that you get that really deep foresty look. And I've actually got a video coming up for my patrons, uh, for my patrons with a green recipes that I use Ecoline um, inks with. And I've actually written the recipes out for them of my five favourite ones. And I'm I've put it in quite a special container too. I think I think you'll like that. Um, yes. Yeah, so indigo is if you buy one blue and if it's a dark one, get indigo. It's brilliant. It's a particularly nice one too. This little guy here is well, nothing to do with Daniel Smith at all. It is, in fact, one of my Ganzai Tambi watercolours. I can get in here and grab some palettes out that I've made. It's the white version of these, and these are the Japanese watercolours. Um, they're kind of mixed. They're in between a normal watercolour here air quotes there and gouache so they're kind of got some track especially these light colours which I made a bit of a mess there these have got a few more pigment um, particles in them and can be a little bit more opaque so interesting what's also interesting is I have three of these palettes they're all full and I don't know where I'm going to put that one so <laughs> I'll have to think about that nicer problems to have Right, what have we got there? They're not pan pastels. They would be, uh huh, yep, those. Know what they are? Let's go with these. These are oil pastels. They are Caran d'Ache Neo pastels. That is totally different from Caran d'Ache um, Neo colours. These are Neo pastels, these are oil pastels, and they smell like it. If I hadn't got so many allergies, Oh, yes, they smell like the first box of crayons that I ever got in school back in the day. And these are to supplement the ones that I have already. And I'm building my collection, basically. So I have an olive grey, a pale yellow, a white, golden yellow, ivory black. It's this one, mahogany. A lilac pink salmon pink I do love a nice salmon pink and I've got raspberry red an ash gray and a jade so they're kind of a nice um, selection to go with what I have already so I like those very much and they are super super opaque um, they don't dry quickly some people say they don't dry at all I don't I'm not buying that Everything will dry eventually, but it could take some time. I'll give them that. So, um, yes, I will show you again what I'm... I've made some marks on my desk. At least I can wipe this clean pretty quickly. I'll show you what I do with those. And, um, again, watch this space. I'm going to also do a swatching video because, as you know, from if you are keeping up on my YouTube, I've put a, uh, for people watching this there, I have a why I use a swatch book. And I will show you how, um, I'll, sh I'll swatch them and put them in there and show you how they all slot in. And if you watch that video, which I will pop up in this part of the screen somewhere, um, all things going well uh, you can have a look at that too and uh, yeah I'll be adding all of these to my swatch book these are a bit boring I've got them already these were just refills so I need these this one Chinese white you need to buy 10 of those every time I haven't but I I've got one two three, I've got seven and they're all getting small and I panic when they get small so I've bought another one uh, yellow ochre brilliant for light when I make my greens out of the Ecoline liquid watercolour, 
the indigo plus other colors which again like i said i've i'll pop the recipes into a special video at some point um it's all planned when i use that i use yellow ochre to highlight my trees because it's brilliant it's just works brilliantly and it's fabulous for that coloring light sienna and wheat brilliant for going over things you get don't please don't take a, a shot of any sort of alcohol every time i say the word brilliant i love my art things um these are great colors to have they're light they go over things and um at the moment let me just grab please excuse him he's half built at the moment i've got to put another wing on i'm building this kingfisher and to get these highlight colours and the iridescence, I use Derwent drawing pencils and different things. I also use my Derwent ink tents to, um, to, to get the main colours in and build all these little feathers. As you can see, there's their individual feathers on the wings and tail. But those particular colours are very, very useful for highlighting. All right, where to next? I think this let me see what's here so I can plan this a little tiny bit goodness me ah let's go colored pencils since we're still on colored pencils let's go more colored pencils this little box here it's like a box of chocolates it's probably better I'll get back to you on that it could be better depends on the chocolates okay I have got here some Ink tents, Derwent ink tents. Let's start with those. Derwent ink tents, dark cerulean, cadmium yellow, and gold. Those colours go towards my collection. I've got most of the others. In fact, I've got all of the others. I'm missing two. Um, this is full set syndrome rampant. Please, I hope you aren't a fellow sufferer. There should be a helpline for us. I need all the colours in all the brands that I love, and it's ridiculous. So... I've got two and I've got the whole set of those. But in my defence, I would like to say that I use them all the time. All of them. Almost all of them. This one here is a Caran d'Ache Luminance in Green Ochre. I absolutely adore this colour. This plus Yellow Ochre in Derwent Drawing plus the greens I mix myself with Ecoline Liquid Watercolour. That's how I do a lot of my trees. And again, I'm even though I love all of the colours, because every now and again I need one of them, I do have a core set that I reach for again and again and again. And this is in there. That's in there. So that's a replacement as well and can go into that bottle. Don't need to swatch that because I've already done it. Um, 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 liquid. This one's also, let's get the Caran d'Ache ones out. This one is Burnt Sienna 10%. Love that one. And this one is Anthrocyanine Carmine. Those two are new. I didn't. I thought I had the full set. And imagine my joy when I looked in my swatch book and saw spaces. And I thought, oh, I'll buy those. So here they are. So that's good. I think there are still one or two, but the shop didn't have them at the time. Then in that same vein, I have got... Uh, some of the new colours of Derwent Lightfast, they put out some new colours, I think it was sometime last year, I'm a little bit late to the party, but I was happy with the colours that I had until I saw that they had some new ones out. This one's not new, this one's Light Aqua, and I use this for my skies and getting texture into backgrounds over the top of the greens I mix. Again, back to the Ecoline Liquid Watercolour, go over the top with this. You get some really lovely highlights. Can I reach my blackbirds? Yes, I can. No, that's under the blackbirds. Right, goodness. Um, so what I've done here is I have painted all that green and then I've come back on the top with that light aqua Derwent Light Fast colour to just bring some sky out and to give it a bit more texture and also to lighten it up without using white there are so many ways you can do to darken without black or lighten without white and it gives your paintings and artworks a little bit more vibrancy so that's what I've used that for so again I've replaced that because the other one's running low and I can't stand the thought of running out you've heard of FOMO well I have FORO I'm not even sure that's a thing fear of running out 
Dermot Lightfast have a white pencil. I've never tried it. I'm not going to try it now, but I will be swatching these. So that'll be interesting because I have a video on my Patreon about the best whites to use in almost every situation for mixed media. Um, worth checking out, I feel. I mean, I would say that. I, I, um, I shot it, <laughs> but I do think it is. It's a comprehensive look at all the whites going. And I have a favourite, which I make quite clear, and I'm going to be very interested to see if this is a rival for it. And I think I tested nine pencils to get that favourite, and they're all on the video. This one is Mist. I kind of like to think I've already got this, but I can't have because... No, I've got Moonstone. It's quite similar. It's very bloody similar, actually. Um, I can see that Moonstone appears to be a bit warmer and mist a bit cooler. So we shall see when they're swatched out if they are or not. Champagne. I love a nice light neutral. You can do so much with it. Even though this colour is very similar to the colour of the paper on one of my sketchbooks, you can still use it for various layering techniques. Warm grey. My favourite of all the greys are warm greys. Um, even though I get frustrated with myself sometimes because, for example, if I paint a seagull, seagulls are actually quite a cool grey mostly, I still prefer it when I use warm grey. Lichen green, love a green. Love these dark, muddy greens that they've got in the Derwent White Light Fast range. They're brilliant. I love Merlot, which is a nice burgundy, burgundy brown. Looks like it's going to be very nice. Really resisting swatching now, but I have other stuff here and we'll be here all day if I start swatching. Dark indigo. Enough said. I've said about indigo. There it is again. So those are the coloured pencils in that lot. Then moving on to the next little box. I love the fact that there's nothing on there except the wrong label on the end. It gives me a surprise as well. These are some Lyra and Tombos. Some Lyras in different colours. Let me sort them out. That's not. That's a Tombow. That will be a Tombow. The rest are Lyra. Tombows first. I have no idea what colour this is because it's a state secret. They never write it on the barrel, which I find totally annoying. Just a number. Which is why I talked about in my swatching video that I put up before, the, the link that I put up before, having the number is important. And I say enough about it there, so, you know, it's, uh, yeah. 133, goodness knows, but it seems like a nice green. Okay, Lyra are a little bit more obliging. They put the name and the number. So we've got the number to do, use, and this one's satin red. This one is Venetian red. This one is Naples yellow reddish, obviously a theme occurring here. This one is burnt ochre. This one is brown ochre, warm grey medium, that again, and flesh tint deep. So there is a real theme here of warm colours. I do like warm colours. I think I prefer them to cool. Having said that, I'm loving my Kingfisher colours that I'm getting for him, and they're all cool. So right place, right time, I guess, with colours, actually. Um, but these are lovely. And I adore an autumn palette too. So this plays into all the things that I love. And again, I am at the moment, as you'll see in my swatch book, I have got holes where the Lyras should be. So they will be swatched into there. What have we got here? Okay, different pens. Not ready for those yet. I'm sorry to do that to you, but there's... Oh, wait a second. There's more in here. There are some more Tombos. Also, no name. This one's N57, which is particularly nice. It's a greenish grey by the look of it. Another neutral, N4, um, sorry, 942 and 992. So two sort of neutrally coloured ones. Super, super useful with landscapes. All of these are nice. And they're warmer tones. Even the green, even though green is a cooler tone, it's a warmer green than, say, this one. That one's sort of somewhere in the middle. This one's getting towards the warm end of the spectrum. So they will be useful additions to my haul. This is something new to me. It is, but it isn't. 
um, I'm very, very, um, I use a lot of Faber-Castell products, love them. They are as good as they claim to be, better actually. I love the Pit Artist markers, which are Indian ink, and therefore once they dry, that's it, you're stuck with them. However, it makes it nice, and they're nice rich colours. They go over everything beautifully. They'll even go over things you don't expect them to go over. Um, but these are different because these are a dual pit, a, a, a dual, dual ended. I've got the brush tip ones. In fact, I have the full set of the brush tip ones, and. I've got some of the smaller ones, but this gives you an eight millimeter. I think you can see that there, probably better without my finger, an eight millimeter one, whereas the largest I've got in the others, I think is 5.5, and this one's 0.8, sorry, not eight, 0.8, and it gives you a nice brush end as well. And I really like that. So I have decided to dip the toe in with four warm colors. I've got raw umber, I've got warm grey three and I've got India red and I've got dark sepia. Warm grey three is a brilliant, <laughs> there again, please don't take a drink. Warm grey three is a brilliant shadow um, marker. So you can add shadows to things with that. What have I got here to show you? Ah, this one. Um, on my pansies here, which is a collage and all 3D, but I've made shadows under some of the leaves there and under the flowers here that sort of thing bottoms of the rocks that's all done with a warm gray three so it's really really quite nice for adding those sorts of details i hope i don't need that again because it has just dropped out of reach so these are the beginnings of the next set can i just say okay what have we got in here no nope. keep picking that one up this is the one i'm after next these are some new Liquitex markers. These are acrylic markers and that one's quite bent quite a lot and also looks to have a bit of a leak. So I'm not sure if that one's well or not. I shall open that and have a look. It'd be better if I had a, a knife. I loathe opening these. They've always got this perforation, but it rarely works. Oh no, it's just... I think it's had a bit of a difficult time because it's a bit bent, but it's okay. Um, trouble is you send it back because you paid full price and they then discard, quite often companies will discard them and just put them into landfill, whereas in actual fact there's nothing wrong with the pen and I'm quite happy to use it. Right, Liquitex is a divisive issue amongst artists quite often because they do not cover as well as some other brands. For example, you have got Posca markers. Grab one of those so I can show you what it looks like. The Uni Poscas, they are quite opaque and there are Molotov are a bit, depending on the color, of course, all of this is color dependent. But by and large, the Liquitex ones don't cover quite as well and quite as solidly as the others. I like that because it means they create textures and to me it's all about the texture I don't want a total coverage of paint as if I was painting my kitchen wall or something I want textures and with these because they tend to be what can I say scratchy a little bit scratchy they're lovely and juicy beautiful colors but they don't cover completely and I find that a bonus because it means that I can get textures on bark of trees I can get text I don't think I can reach anything to show you you'll have to take my word for on that one bark on trees textures on roadways um what else uh all sorts of things let me see if I can find something here this this one might have something in it um stone walls is another one um no that's a different texture different thing a second excuse the very very rapid flip through there don't want to make anybody unwell but motion sickness yeah obviously can't find anything but these sorts of textures can be created with those markers i've used a slightly different method for this as my patrons will actually recognize as my resist technique so different tools but 
the same sort of deal anyway texture you can use stuff if it doesn't cover completely you can use it to create texture i have a burnt umber thylocyanine green cadmium yellow deep hue that's important i will put that aside and explain that in a second burnt sienna raw umber and bronze yellow why cadmium yellow hue is such an important word the word on the end that's important is the word hue it means it's fake cadmium cadmium is not a safe pigment and if you are pregnant nursing or trying to avoid things like cancer be very careful how you use cadmium colors because some of them are toxic they don't always say they should but then again there are different rules in different places and sometimes for example you get a warning in america in california for example that's like an alarm you can't turn off they warn about absolutely everything but actually cadmium colors are not safe as a rule so or, or have risks as a rule um which is what I learnt when I was in uni and so forth. So be careful how you use those. When it says hue, it means that it's a fake variety of it. So you've got the same colour, but it's been artificially created. Much safer, perfectly good to use. And um, it has the AP non-toxic thing there. Um, so just be careful. You You might notice back here one of my... Liquitex ones is cadmium yellow. I'll have to be careful and I wash my hands. I don't leave it on my skin. I don't obviously breathing it in is a bit difficult because it's it's going to be wet so it's not going to be airborne. But if you're using pastels, for example, soft pastels that create dust, you do have to be aware of that. Um here again, I hate to say this, I'm sounding like a broken record. I have a podcast about this on my Patreon, which I go into in a lot more detail because it is important and it matters. And because of my medical background, it matters that I tell people. You don't have to panic and still use them, but be careful. And like I said, if you are pregnant or if you are nursing, don't choose another yellow. It's that simple. There are other yellows, there are other oranges, and the cadmium really is only in red, orange, and yellow. But I, I wouldn't be using them if I was pregnant. Right. This is my big experiment. This one's a bit of a wild card. That's meant to be burgundy. I call it magenta, actually. I am on the hunt for a perfect liner that isn't black and I want it to be either grey or I want it to be brown. Various browns doesn't matter and the reason why I'm looking for this is because I want to, I like painting, let me grab something here, there must be something surely with a bloody tree in it. No, we're back to that one. I love doing these fine trees, it's actually this one's a good one. This one's got soft pastels as a background and it's got then um, these fine details over the top. And sometimes black is great, but I don't always want black. Here's another one. This was a Patreon tutorial, so my patrons watching here will recognise that. If you haven't seen it, do have a look. And this is a perfect example as well. I didn't want all this black. I wanted variations of colour and I wanted some of it to be lighter. And I had a couple to make these very fine lines with. Um, this is another patron tutorial, same detail, and I wanted to use it again. So I had a couple to make these very fine lines with, but I wanted more, obviously, because never satisfied. So I've gone out and I've bought one of every single one the shop had in stock at the time and I have a selection here of light grey I have medium greys in a couple of different tips another one I've got some dark greys another couple of dark greys by the look a couple of and the rest are brown these are these lovely umbers and siennas and what have you this one is this one's a pencil uh, brush sign pen this one's supposed to be burgundy like I said Unless the ink is vastly different to what I've, I've got here on the outside, it's sparkly pink. Uh, this one is another Pentel brush sign pen. 
and it's brown, same brand, dark brown. This one is, again, Faber-Castell, same brand as this, same colour, dark sepia 175, but this is 0.8 millimetre on the sh sh shortest end. This one is 0.7. What else have we got? Because there's a few there. This one is a calligraphy pen. So just to show you, that's got a broad tip. But I don't do calligraphy, not at the moment. That'll come. Don't trust me. It'll come. I can either make a broad stroke or a very, very fine stroke with that. So it's always worth looking at. And this one is 0.5, which is a smaller one. I believe there's a smaller one again, but I've probably got that already, which is why I didn't buy it. So got all those now happy bunny this one is a brush sign pen in sepia and again it's the same as these other these ones here pentel fabulous love those um this one is uni pin fine line uh, 0.1 and 0.5 so again i have never used these before i will and i will show you what happens there these what have we got we've got some again faber castell pit artist pit artists fine liners um so same thing india ink same as these dual ones and this one's 0.5 s which is 0.3 calligraphy which was the broad one and 0.7 which is the other larger one that one's a medium and so forth there's an extra extra small as well so they they don't last brilliantly well when they're very very tiny but then again it's not the fault of the manufacturer it's the fault of the fact that i expect them to perform over terrain that they're not designed for so that's on me um again another couple of uni pin uh, this one is a 0.1 and a 0.5 and this is dark gray mitsubishi brand mitsubishi pencil company so those two same company 0.5 and 0.1 and this time they are light gray two light gray ones because depending on how the sun comes through trees will depend on which color you use that looks best and this one is another pentel brush sign pen which is a uh, gray just an ordinary old gray loving those so i love the black one and the sepia that i've got all already i use them constantly the um, really you need a couple to paint a tree if you're painting a big thick tree because you need something to get the breadth of the trunk in then you need something that's you you can also use a brush to get the smaller branches but once you come to the twigs you need a medium and a fine so that you get the really fine twigs Again, I don't think I can grab anything to show you what I mean, but watch this space. There'll be something. Finally, I have... Right, that's all going to roll because they're round. Well done, genius. They'll be fine. They can't go anywhere. These are all about soft pastels. I have a lot of these already. I'm building my collection. And if you have a look at the... Um, video that I made about my art space for my patrons you can see how I've laid them out in the drawer which I it's an it's my way of doing it but I think it works really well again I would say that because I'm doing it but <laughs> tell me what you think this here first of all is an empty box which cost me 12 euros and the reason it cost me 12 euros is because I cleverly threw out these come with little with little um, foam inserts and I absent-mindedly threw them all out thinking oh I'll put these on a tray or something trust me they're much much better off in things like this so now I've got a lot of orphan pastels making a lot of dust in my drawer because they're rolling about so what I've done instead is I've bought this one this is a Sennelier box it provides space for 24 pastels and that will be brilliant for all the ones I threw away and I know better now, so I don't do that again. I'm also going to keep the box and just pop it in the drawer because this works as a nice divider and keeps things organised. So that's in that one. Nice bit of extra foam there. I don't know that I'll use that, although I might. Actually, that is thick enough. It's what I've got here. i just grab this out. In order to make good my mistake, I got a piece of this interfacing that I use in my sewing because those amongst you who know I also make bags 
and sell bag patterns and to magazines quite often. So I've got all these nice um, interfacings. So what I did was I laminated two together, but I cut holes out of one of them just to stop this. And I had this, so I made it fit that. These are a little bit thicker than the Sennelier ones, but it will work, especially since I know now not to throw them away. So I shall just put the ones in here that are getting on my nerves the most. And I can have this as a backup if it's ever needed. So yeah, they'll fit in there and then they'll go into the drawer. So that will be fine. Problem solved. And I may, like I said, use this to cut little spaces for this side, just in case I ever do it again. Who knows? In the meantime, I have bought some new colors. Let's open these up. And see what's in there. Love that color. That's going to get a lot of use. I use these differently to other people. I'm not a pastel um, artist, as in a proper pastel artist. What I do, so I can take that out. That's fine because I do not want the box. I'm very sure about that. But don't throw the foam insert away. Because like I said, I've just paid 12 euros for an empty box because of that. I can be, I, I'm that clever sometimes. The sort of put your washing in the fridge type clever. Right, so what I've got here are additions to my collection. I don't use pastels the way other people use them. I use them um, in the background of my paintings to create lovely misty sunrises and what have you. And the best one I can show you is page one on here and again I do have a Patreon video to show you how I achieve this that first one there for example the sky the trees the fields everything that you see there is created with soft pastels then I go over the top with other media so you know I, I still absolutely love these glowy sorts of soft effects that you can get in the background I mean look at that how it comes together there I'll just you need pastels for that well rather i use pastels for that if you've got another method fine do keep doing that but i use soft pastels to get that effect so i have got vivid orange beige ochre dark apricot ivory white one and white two because you can't have too many whites anyway and because they're slightly different i'll have a look when i swatch them and show you ashy brown lime green white red ochre Pale Portrait Pink, Smalt Blue White. Smalt is sky. You'll see it translated as sky. Uh, dark Cobalt Blue, Dark Yellowish Olive Green. Quite a name for such a little stick. Mild Green, Smalt Blue, Purple, Powder Blue, Cinnamon, Deep Carmine, Deep Wine Red, Fade Violet, Pure Pink, Dark Lilac, Deep Sky Blue, Dark Lavender Blue and Powder Lime Blue. And there are colours in here that I would never, ever use in my paintings if I had a choice. And that's one of them. The reason I've bought it is because it's one of the most beautiful sunrise colours that you can get. And it's just so clear when mixed with, say, this green here and the smalt blue and white all together make a beautiful spring or early, you know, mid-winter sunrise where you get those really, really bright, we've just had a decent frost mornings that they're great for that so that's why I would use a pink like that because as you've probably noticed in this whole lot that it's mainly earth tones and it's muted this liquitex here and this vivid orange is so bright for me but I need this because wildflowers and I've got this Caran d'Ache neopastel as well golden yellow that's really bright for me I normally would prefer something like that, far, far, far more muted. And I would use that as a yellow. But I, yeah, I like those because I like the wildflowers that we get here. And in Germany in the May, we've got so much rape seed, you know, canola fields and so forth. And they are the brightest yellow you've ever seen. And then, of course, there are dandelions and things like that. So you need colours, even though you might look at a colour and say, I don't like that colour. Fine, if you really hate it, don't buy it. That would be stupid. But be aware that in some circumstances you will use it. Um, some artists have a limited colour palette that they work with. I don't do that sort of minimalism. 
um, I have to have the colours because I look at the landscape and I paint what I see or I sketch what I see. So if there's a certain blue, I want to try and recreate that blue, not any blue. So if this is the blue that I'm seeing, I don't want that blue or that blue. I want that one because that's the one that's there. And I really admire people who can work with four colours and paint everything. Not talking about people who mix. That's different. You can mix. I can mix colours. I don't like to sometimes. Sometimes the company has mixed a perfect colour and it's just lovely. And I, don't, I, I want that one. <laughs> I don't want to mix a colour. But every now and again, I will mix a colour. But I'm talking about these sorts of things that you just use or, the, you know, any other things that you've seen here today. I want the colours that are in the landscape around me. And this is these are the colours of the Germany that I live in. So, yeah, that's the end of that. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Please, please um, accept my thanks for staying with me for so long about this. And like I said, I will put that other video up for you to show you why I keep a swatch book because it's here. It's on YouTube and I will do some other videos for my patrons and swatch these out and see them, especially the ones that I've never used before. That's going to be a bit of a discovery for both of us. So do consider joining my Patreon. There's lots on there, actually quite a lot now, um, huge amounts because it's been going for over a year or about a year, almost a year, something to do with a year. Um, so there's lots on there and lots more coming, one hopes. And uh, yeah, so I will bid you adieu today. Thank you so much for watching and um, hope to see you over on Patreon. Bye.